We'll start with this chart. My obsession with fixing healthcare started a few years ago when I saw this. And for those of you who haven't seen this chart, that sums up how terrible we're doing in healthcare in this country. Uh, to put it even bluntly, it shows that we just suck at healthcare in this country. We spend twice as much than our peer nation, and yet you see that we are have a much lower life expectancy, and the quality of life is much lower as well. And when I saw this, it was like a slap in my face, too. And I realized that we have so much advancements in technology and innovative business models and, and just in business and startups, but we still can't get this healthcare thing right. So, you know, I started to, to, to analyze what the problem really was and get down to the fundamentals, the root problems of healthcare. And it led me to a, a couple things that need to happen. And uh, I will say that the, the future of healthcare is going to be terrible if we don't do anything about it. And this little guy right here, maybe they put it all into a different perspective. Was, uh, two years ago, when I brought him home from the hospital, I held it. And when you have a kid the first time, it puts life in a different perspective. And you definitely start thinking differently of the future. And that's what it caused me to do. I started looking at, uh, just imagine what his life was going to be like. You know, imagine teaching him how to swing a golf club and throw a baseball. Uh, just thought about imagining his, uh, what school is going to look like and what college is going to look like and what career field would look like. Then I got to healthcare. And since I was already neck deep in researching the problems of healthcare, I realized that if we continue down this path, it's only going to get worse for his generation. And uh, right then and there, it was very clear to me that uh, my passion and my abilities uh, should be put to use for, for fixing that. So I made a pact with my son that for the next 30 years I was going to dedicate my professional career to fixing healthcare. I know it's a big audacious plan, but it takes one step at a time. So here we are today. And I started thinking about how we fix healthcare um, by running a thought experiment. Everybody remembers the, the neuralizer, the men in black pen. So I thought about just zapping everybody's memory. We forgot everything about health insurance, the way healthcare is managed, paid for, all of it. We just started fresh. We brought all the smartest people in the room, patients, caregivers, physicians, we all sat down at the table and we said, all right, what's most important to us? And we brought all the, the new technologies to the table, stuff that we, we have right now, stuff that's gonna be in development in the future. And then we said, all right, how can we build a new business model around us? How can we be efficient with our care and optimize our health? And well, it looks much different than what we have now. So I wanna, because we, uh, we are at a, a very important part in history, important time. And if you see this chart right here, this is a yeah, rough estimation of Moore's Law or uh, exponential technology growth. And today, in 2018, we are right at the very start of a uh, large growth straight upward in terms of exponential technology growth. And if you look back at the past 20, 30 years, we've had an incremental improvement. These, these exponential doublings of technology has just gotten us a little uh, quite far, and we have some very innovative things, but that is nothing compared to what's gonna happen in the next 10, 20, 30 years. It's gonna be mind blowing. And for the, the purposes of, of health, you look at the cost per genome, I know a few people have thrown this chart out there, but 10 years ago, the cost of sequence of genome was about $10 million. Today, it's about $350, and in 10 years, it's gonna be virtually free, a couple of dollars. So everybody will have their genome analyzed. And with the, the advancements of AI and with computing power, not only can we sequence these genomes really cheap, we can actually start interpreting this, applying AI to these vast data sets and finding insight into um, new, new treatments, new cures for diseases. So let's throw this chart out there. This is, the, this is reality. This is where we're at right now. If you look back in the past 10 years, you're thinking, oh, okay, yeah, the next, the next 10 years might be too much different than, than the previous 10 years. But with that exponential growth factor, it's going to be much different. <laughs> and uh, I'm going to take you on a little journey now um, to that, that different future and what it could look like using the technologies that we're developing now. So your day starts with a data dump. Pun intended there. We <laughs> will have smart toilets that analyze all of our outputs. <laughs> you will be analyzing your urine, your stool. Uh, as you stand and brush your teeth, the pressure sensitive floor will determine your weight. Uh, your toothbrush and your sink will analyze your saliva. Your drain will analyze your hair follicles. And all of this, along with your wearables, uh, will be all passive monitoring your health. 
And with your smart mirror, you'll see these, these statistics. They all feed into your, your health score. So you have a complete holistic view of your health now uh, at a given point in time and over time. So you can start seeing trends. And uh, this will happen today. You had an alert go off and say, congratulations. You just earned 100 minutes for lowering your weight over the, the past 30 days. And, uh, these types of nudges um, start to incentivize you to live a healthier life. Um, and all of those data points are also fed into bioservers. And this is a little far off, 10 years is pushing it. But these bioservers are made up of organs on a chip. If anybody has, has seen this, this is some pretty innovative, innovative technology. That's an example of a lung, and this could be your lung. This could actually be these cells from, from your lungs cultured onto this microfluidic um, cell culture chip. And this actually mimics uh, the activity, the, uh, the mechanisms, and the physiological responses to organs, your specific organs, and complete organ systems. Now this is, this is a example of a full organ system on a chip. Uh, this is probably going to be coming online about 2022. And this, you have a sensor plate on the bottom, you have a nutritional plate on top, and you can feed your organs. So imagine now, if you do have a disease currently, or you know that based on your genetics, you're going to have a particular disease or condition later on in life, we can now test thousands of different drugs, different treatments on you specifically. And you can start monitoring the, the responses based on the, the whole system level and also at the organ level. So uh, think about if you do go through a process and try another drug, didn't work, had side effects, tried another drug, didn't work, had bad side effects. Well now we can just run tests, thousands of different drugs, figure out which one works the best, go with that, and completely change the game. Um, and taking it a step further, this is going to aid in the, the cures for disease. Because now just imagine you have thousands of these things running in a huge data center or a, a bioserver center. Um, you think it's far out, that's, that's not very far away. Uh, this technology has been developed for the past probably six or seven years. So it's finally become able to do this. So now, all right, so now, so now we have invented new ways of research and development for different diseases, new ways to test medications. Well now we need to come up with a new way to pay for healthcare. So, Around you know, 2012 and up to now, there's this movement that's been growing uh, called direct primary care. I'm sure everybody's familiar with that. Well, it's a subscription to health. And it started to grow, starting 2018, 2019. People started to realize that we can subscribe to specialists, not only primary care physicians, but to specialists, and uh, essentially have a subscription for health. And it's not just off the shelf, just any random specialist. It's actually based on your genetics and your, your health data. So we determine what you're most likely to have problems with and you subscribe to these specialists, to these nutritionists, to these different uh, various professionals out there that can help you get healthier. So the whole goal here is to be proactive about health instead of just a reactive sick care model. And one of these payment models is a completely new way to pay for health care. And this is that subscription-based model I mentioned earlier, the health as a service. So for instance, let's just say um, this, this one patient has a predisposition for a particular type of cancer, uh, heart disease, diabetes. Well, instead of just throwing money away to a health insurance company, you can actually start funding a personal health asset. And this is uh, like an HSA, a 401k, and a crypto wallet. And you can start funding this based on uh, what you're more likely to die from later on in life. And from this fund, you are paying these specialists, you are subscribing to their services. But at the same time, you're also funding the research and development for the particular diseases that you have. Um, so you sell them bioservice. That's what we'll be funding that. And part of this, this model is a, a new citizen-led cooperative, if you will, collective, that we all own and control. Uh, there's no centralized authority in this model. So everybody in this, in this whole entire room, everybody listening to me now, uh, if you are a part of this, if you do subscribe to this, you also own this, you also vote in this. So we, once again, can all come to the table and decide what is the best thing for us. So now we have a new way to pay for everything. We have new ways to, to measure health. 
Uh, we need something to run all this. So as, as Adam and, and Casey were mentioning about uh, all these innovations with patient records and data and EHR enhancements, uh, we have been developing something called a health operating system. We're just now starting to, to get this going. But in 2028, 20, 10 years from now, this will be the evolution and replacement of an EHR. So what does this look like? As we all know, centralized services, centralized EHRs at hospitals, uh, they have a lot of bad problems. <laughs> uh, they get hacked a lot. Uh, that's actually estimated right now in this research that one out of every group of engineer have had their patient records stolen, sold on the black market. So now we're moving to a, a decentralized health operating system model where we're using blockchain technologies and AI, we now can bring the physicians, all the specialists, all the, the healthcare providers, nutritionists, the caregivers coming around the patient to focus on the health of the patient. So we're putting the, the health of the patient above a corporate profit. So this, this model here completely changes up the dynamic of the way health data is shared. Um, for instance, everybody now owns their data. I think that's kind of a given at this point in time. Uh, everybody owns their data. It's all encrypted. Actually, I will show that. <coughs> so the health operating system, yes, it is an open source movement. And this is an open source collaborative platform uh, that knocks down borders. And this is a system that can be used in other countries as a drop-in economic framework for their population health. Because you look at a lot of developing countries and they don't have a, a, a solid healthcare infrastructure. Using open source technologies and decentralized technologies can work to, to aid in population health. So this, your health data. So Casey, I saw that QR code and I was going to say, this, this is it. Don't just scan, it's not really a real QR code, it's like you go to a different thing. But example here would, in the future, we're all going to have access to our data. With a simple scan of your face, swipe of your finger, you'll be able to send data to any healthcare provider. Uh, you'll be able to pull your data together with, with other people with your same condition, take that data and use it for open source research or sell it to research companies completely de-identified. The idea here is we now control our data and we are being compensated for that and we are using our data together to help us all. And help us. So democratizing healthcare. Uh, you, me, us, healthocracy. What a great title for a conference, right? Uh, whoever came up with that, props. Who did come up with that title, by the way? Sarah. No. Sarah, I love it. Sarah. <laughs> Sarah, I love it. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Well, uh, real talk here. Uh, this is this was on the short list of names for our governance model. So everything we're doing at Citizen Health it is um, built off blockchain technologies and decentralized protocols. So we want everybody to have a voice and a vote in the direction of citizen health, in the direction of our healthcare future. So, healthocracy is a uh, somewhat of a hybrid model between liquid democracy and Q-tarchy. I'm not to what those are. The idea here is, if you're a part of this, you do have a say. And you can veto things that are happening, we can act as a crowd and decide on what's best for us as a society. So, uh, once again, back to this chart. If we continue down this path, it's not going to look good for our kids. It's not going to look good for our older selves. The thing is, the status quo is not going to fix this. The status quo built this. They're, this is their cash cow. It's got to come from the ground up. It's got to be a grassroots, open source, collaborative movement that involves us, the patients, the, the healthcare providers, the caregivers, the people that are affected every single day and that are influenced by the system. So I'm going to challenge everybody and say, to, to join a movement of, of an open source initiative. I know there's been a lot of open source talk around here, but that is what's going to get us there. That's going to move this red line up and backwards, which kind of throws off the format of this chart, but that's what it's going to take. It's going to take us coming together to focus on healthcare for the people and by the people. Uh, this has got to be done by us, and it's got to start now if we want to have a system like we're going to have in 30 years. So, thank you.